Hello, I'm Brian with Alaskan Campers. I'd like to take a few minutes here to show you a tour of your new camper you purchased and thank you very much. Um, basically the first day when you get here on loadout day, park on the parking lot, check in the office in the front street side door, um, we'll take you out, get you set of safety glasses, um, come out show you the camper and then uh, we will take it from there and we'll get the camper mounted on the truck and everything and then we'll come out and then if you have any more questions and everything we can take you out in the shop but you have to be with one of us um, we can't have you just wandering around the shop due to safety and insurance reasons another thing is dogs we like dogs but sometimes dogs don't like us and a loud hammer will go off and sometimes you know scares them and we just can't really have them wandering around out here so they have to either stay in the truck or with you in the waiting area on a leash um, so let's go over the camper Basically, you have two electricals. You have the truck's 12-volt electrical, and you have the 110 uh, if you're at a campsite or plugged in at home. So the automotive side, the 12-volt, you basically have a hot, a running, lights, and a ground. And so it's trickle charging while you're driving. It's going to be charging the camper battery. Um, the other side of it is the 110. Now, I don't suggest our cord. Just a nice 12-gauge extension cord is great. When this is plugged in, this is going into the battery charger, which is called a converter, and that's converting the 110 to 12 volt down to the camper battery and charging the battery. It's also going to give you 110 to the three outlets that are GFI protected inside the camper. There's three outlets in 99% of all campers. Up here also, we have a hole, and this hole is going to line up with this hole when we lower the top down and we put a bolt through there which is called the travel lock and this will be on the raise and lower checklist and it's very important obviously when we go to camp to try to raise the top that this bolt is taken off what I like to do when I take it out I set it on my driver's seat so when I go to drive away I notice it's there and I put it back in for travel these tracks here are called our slides and guides there's no contact down the middle there's just contact inside the curves here so couple times a year clean out any dust or grit that gets in there with uh, lacquer thinner soap rag actually works the best and then just brush some white lithium grease inside here just a nice light coat underneath here um, there's a bug screen it's it's the overflow vent for the water tank and this will keep the mud daubers out so they don't clog the vent line and when the tank's overfilled, it'll spit out here. We don't want to overfill the tank, so you want to be mindful of the water level as you're filling it up, which I'll go over when we get inside. These are our normal Ryko Titan jack brackets. The jacks bolt to these um, to take the camper on and off. Now, obviously, this camper is on a flatbed with boxes. That doesn't matter. This is just a normal camper, an eight and a half, a six and a half, seven, eight, eight and a half, and ten. They all basically they're all the same, it's just how many options and size of interior basically is all it is. This is awning rail, which we have on both sides, usually is an option. Um, it comes with little clips here, somewhere. They just slide in there, so you can hang a tarp off it or decorative lights, anything you want. It's kind of a nice feature, just gives you something, you know, make a privacy curtain out of for the outside shower or whatnot. Speaking of the outside shower, it's right here. If you have a water heater, you're gonna have hot and cold. If you don't have water here, you just have cold and cold. Obviously a four foot handle sits in a little rest here. Uh, great for rinsing sandy feet and things like that. The water heater right now is a four gallon Suburban. Um, you don't have to light it out here. This is just kind of a service access. You'll notice it's not on a hinge, it's on pins, so just lift it up. And we'd light it on the inside, there's a switch, it's automatic light. But this is the anode rod, which you should change about once a year. And it also will drain out the water for winterizing if you want to drain the system. Now, your sink water will be basically located wherever the kitchen sink is this is just a regular garden hose fitting it comes out here and you can put that into any gray water container of your choice okay now we're at the back of the camper and if you look up high here there's a 
LED porch light, which the switch to turn that on and off is just inside the camper on the face of the overhead cabinet towards the rear. Then down here you have your water connections. The city water connection is if you're just going to stay hitched up to a hose at someone's house or a campsite and you just run off the pressure, pressure this will not go to the water tank. The fresh water connection bypasses all the plumbing and just goes straight up to the water tank and fills the water tank. And this is your propane compartment. It's a 20 pound horizontal tank. It does have a gauge on it and it's horizontal on top, vertical on the bottom. We're a horizontal tank, so we're only looking at the top end of it. So when it's getting, when it needs filling, we shut it off, use a 7 8 wrench here, and it's left hand thread on propane, so it's gonna feel like you're tightening it, but you'll actually be loosening it. The regulator assembly will just kinda of sit off to the side, then take the wing nut off, and just lift the tank up and out. Because they have to fill this when it's standing up vertical, so when they do that, once it's full, put it back in, make sure the rubber hose is on top of the water tank and doesn't get pinched behind the tank. And you can use this area for storage for the wrench or hatchet, or I use my gray water hose for my sink drain and just coil it up in here. Your serial number is always stamped right below the uh, propane door. Speaking of doors, we have our full height double dutch door so we have a little slide latch here to close that and then you have a standard just like deadbolt in a house goes in turn it into the door jam back up and out and then the top door right now is a purple key and you have a latch lock which is a quarter turn to the right and pull out and then the deadbolt turns into the door jam, back up and out and pull out. So now you actually have one, two, three, four locks. If the top door is locked, the bottom door can't open. So there's plenty of security. Now, the top is up right now. We're in the camping position. Let's picture the top coming down the 21 inches. If you crawl inside there and the wind blew the door shut, this, latch assembly would be right here and you'd be on the other side so we do put a rod here that will open up the latch if you were inside stuck with the top down get you out of there and now it'll end up being just right here little slider window on the back door now the toilet's here so this is the top end of the toilet. This is just like at home, the tank on top of the bowl has the fresh water in that goes down into the bowl and rinses. That's exactly what this is. You just drop the hose in here, fill it till you can see water in the bottom and it's ready to go. Then when it's full, open the cassette access door and here's your cassette toilet. Um, you reach in here, fingers lift up the blue handle, slide out. And then there is a handle on the bottom and wheels so you can roll it to the toilet or dump station. Spin off the cap. There's a vent for your thumb. That'll vent it as you pour it out. And then this guy, when you slide it in, just automatically gets pushed out of the way. So it's really just a little splash guard. And that you can open up. This is the dial that's actually physically gonna dump the toilet when you open it up. It's gonna drop into here. So this is where you put your chemical and a little bit of water in the bottom of the tank to slosh around. And it's ready to go. Slider in, swing that in, done. This is your furnace exhaust, uh, the 20,000 BTU forced air. So if the furnace were running and the top came down, this would block off and that wouldn't be good. So we do put a kill switch on here so the furnace will not run with the top down. This fitting here is the fresh water tank drain. We'll just drain the water out for winterizing or just end of the camping trip and you don't need it. All done there. Do you have awning rail on this side if you order the awning rail option? This is refrigerator vent. Since we're using all Novacool fridges, you don't have any dials or on off buttons. This is just ventilation for the fridge. And then if you order the Fiamma awning, that's here. Now the handle can be stowed usually different 
floor plans will let it slide behind a couch, but if you think about it, this is where you're going to be using it, so why not have this in the back seat of the truck? So, there So to open this guy up, you just hitch it on the loop, crank it counterclockwise, and then when you get it out as far as you want, there are legs that pop out of the assembly here, swing down, a wing nut that goes down to the ground, same thing over there. And when you go to put it back in, uh, you know, high winds, you don't want this out. If it's going to be breezy and you're going for a hike, it's probably best to tuck it away, but swing it up, push it down in, and then crank it in. Okay, let's go inside. The steps here on the outside, if you order the optional steps, uh, they just come off, compress down. You can just tuck inside or stow in any compartment you want. Just deploy them, just stretch them out. Put them in the back. Okay, so now that we're inside the camper, we're going to show you how to lower down the cab overarms. So the camper's on the pins right now. That's when it's level, it's in the camping height. That's when the cab over doors are drilled and the locks are installed. So when it's on the pins, that's when we either raise the cab over doors or put the cab overs down. So to do that, there's a bunk latch towards the rear of the door we take off. And a wood block here flips up out of the way. And then we pull the door down. And then we do the same on each side. And then the front door comes down over those. Now this area I'm sitting in here, you can pile blankets, sleeping bags up about this high. Um, we can't have anything under here because if this door is pushed up, then this guy's not going to come down over. So a thin sheet is fine, but other than that, it's got all pile up in this middle section. So when we go to put this up, which we'll do in the end when we raise and lower, we put the front door forward, flip that block out of the way, pop a door up on the side, put the block down, that holds it till you get back here to the bunk latch. And same on this side. And the side doors have screens and then the front's a solid front picture window. Up here you do have a fantastic, no, oops. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Max Air vent fan. Uh, you pull the knob down, open it up. Then you have an on off. Then you have direction. And then you have an auto setting, which will try to keep it at a certain temperature if you're going for a hike. Uh, you have plus and minus for speeds, obviously. And direction, if you want to change direction, you just hit direction and it'll stop and then go the other way. And then just turn her off. When we close it, you snug it down, not real tight, but then you push this up. Clicks in it, now it's locked in for travel. Okay, the fuse panel here. So you've got a 110 side here, which you have incoming, outgoing, which are the outlets which start. There's a GFI underneath the overhead cabinet. Then it goes back to the kitchen galley and then it jumps over the other side above the refrigerator. And then AC is for air conditioner if you have an air conditioner. And then CONV's converter and that's your battery charger converter. Um, depending on the options uh, here, 12 volt fuses here. Um, the top one's hydraulic and then two light circuits. A heater, water pump. This one has a charge port and then hot water heater, the 12 volt, just to fire up the circuit board to light it with the electronic ignition. This cord wrap here is from the 12 volt stuff down throughout to the different 12 volt appliances. This one does have the ZAMP solar controller. Um, obviously, this will have its own manual, so you can read up on that, but 
in a nutshell um, it's already been set to the correct battery type it has amp slash volts here is the, the the go to is just the voltage so it's on voltage right now it says full but it's 14.2 volts push that again it'll say a for amps that's how many amps are coming in per hour zero because we're inside click it again it'll be a h for amp hours and that will be how many amp hours came in from sunup to sundown and then it has a basically a general battery condition here and it, it takes care it's a smart charger just like our converter they won't overcharge batteries nor will the solar panel going to the front wall here you have a sliding window then you have your table bracket here and on the table it's being held up here by a piece of maple just kind of support it slide the friction catch back bring the table down and put the table goes into the wall bracket so you see I'm not even holding it it's resting in the bracket just push down on a little bit now it's in and it's locked in swing the leg down there's a little spring loaded catch find the right height and there it is you can travel with it here or up there it doesn't matter and a lot of people wonder if it's real heavy it's not it's actually made about you know 70 percent of its styrofoam so it's pretty manageable so we've got our furnace nine times out of ten thermostats right here so here's your temperature here's the on off and it's basically cold to hot you just push it and you'll hear it go click turn it up past the ambient temperature now the fans are gonna blow and in about 10 seconds it'll tick 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 and light and you have depending on the floor plan you'll have a duct towards the rear sometimes up here in the countertop and these spin whichever way you like and then a lot of times there will be one low also it just depends on the floor plan of what size fridge so up front here is your water tank lid comes off that's the clean out plug or you can get into or inspect or if you want to just pour water in and not use a hose that's the access right there now under the passenger side couch you just lift these up then you have little like screen door clips take that off and here at the tip of my foot there is the water level indicator that's just a tube that's hitched from the bottom half to the top half and so that'll just show your water in the standpipe as far as what levels in the tank because the top of the tanks here the bottoms at the floor so whatever height there will give you good indication this door here slides open to get you into your wheel wells for extra outdoor storage and then this is storage area under here now that our furnace is running and it's getting nice and warm in here and if you say okay I'm done I'm plenty warm just take him and go all the way back and you'll hear it go click and shut off now the fan's still running it's going to cool itself off but the flame's gone so it'll just run for about a minute and cool down on the driver's side most of the time is your AGM battery which is okay to live inside the living quarters um, tucked under here and most of the time we do put a inline fuse from the fridge because we're only going a few feet from the fridge to here instead of going all the way up to the fuse panel and back down it just it's just voltage drop and Novacool suggests just going straight to the battery another inline fuse will be for the combination CO2 and LP detector that normally is right here in the step area if you have a water heater option most of the time it's sitting right here and what you do is you just turn the switch on the red light comes on which means it's not lit and then in about five seconds it'll go ahead and go off and it'll light by itself so once the lights off that means the water heaters lit now to make this bed you literally just stand right here in the aisle put these two cushions together flop it down don't have to use the table or anything it's all on steel seat frame okay let's go uh, mini blinds we do our new mini blinds are cordless so they're just push up push down and of course your typical twister we do cut short so it doesn't break off when we lower the top down now you probably can't hear it on camera but the fern hot water heater is running now 
So then when we go to turn it off, we're just literally going to take the switch, shut it off, and now it's off. Okay, windows. We have a little, there's like a butterfly lock here that opens, locks and unlocks, and then you can open the screens on these new windows. Change the screen out if it got damaged or pass something outside. Here you have your kitchen galley, you have your work area. Depending on floor plan, once again, what you get, if you have drawers, our drawers do lift up because there's a wedge on the bottom and then open. When you close, they'll just ride up and over and lock in. That way they won't come open while you're driving. We do, most models will have a breadboard, which we do put a little keeper pin in there so it doesn't fly open while you're driving. They all have a tip out tray in front of the sink, under sink storage. Uh, the bottom of these cabinets will pretty much be the hydraulic pump and the water pump. We'll go over the hydraulic pump last year when we go to raise and lower. A little bit of storage around there. On this side, storage cabinet, the refrigerator. So the whether it's the optional bigger fridge, the 3800, three and a half cubic foot or the standard, they operate the same. There's an on and off dial in under here. You turn it from zero to seven. Uh, the bigger fridge does have the freezer. Um, these fridges cool down quicker than a three-way. I'd say an average number to be on is about three to start it off. They don't have to be perfectly level and don't need all the ventilation. They're just an outstanding product. Got some more storage under fridge. Once again, depending on floor plans. Okay, it's going over the cooktop. So the cooktops are self-lighting with a piezo striker so you just pick a burner light push in turn it got flame can turn it down to medium high and then if you want to go back to low you just go back towards off and lower it down the lid does come off for cleaning over here you have your sink uh, if you have hot water obviously hot water cold water the on off switch is here so Turn it on, it'll come on and run if we had water in it and get water. And then, of course, the water is just going straight out to your hose and your water container on the outside. Your overhead storage on each side, we try to, without weighing it, try to keep it relatively level in weight. So, you know, one side's not super heavy, one's light. You know, this camper has a awning on this side, so that's an extra 55 pounds. So. You know, if you have an awning, go ahead and cheat a few more pounds on this side just to offset the weight. We have front and rear over the hydraulics that we'll go over with here in a bit, and then, uh, but we don't have left right. Okay, almost done here. So here's the toilet. So when you go home to show this to friends and family, everybody sees a hinge and they want to lift this up and go bink, and that's not how the cabinets work. The cabinets have a in and out thing here. So we open the doors first, then lift the door up by fold it back now if our furnace is running in your floor plan you have a furnace duct here we're just going to write this as common sense we're not going to do that correct we're going to leave it up like this okay the toilet is here lid all that then you have the pump handle which would pump the water from the reservoir into the bowl and then to physic physically pump or empty the toilet there's a lever just on the front here you'll see it it just goes left and right fore and aft and that's just opening that lid that was on the cassette and then on the back side of the toilet here there's the gauge green is good red is it's getting full and it's time to dump it and so exactly opposite coming down lid goes down first then the doors Okay, let's work towards the hydraulics. So you have two controls for the hydraulic basically towards the rear here. This is the airtight propane compartment that's storing the propane, but we hide our shutoff valve here. And then we have our hydraulic pump, which is always just right next to the door here. So what this is, is just like a manual floor jack. You have the little knob on the bottom to change a tire in a car. You shut it and you pump it up and it raises to lower the car back down you open the knob that's all this lever is so let's go over the hydraulic pump so it's a 12 volt hydraulic pump we've got the motor 
we have our own big reservoir here and then the manifold here this is a flow control valve as is this and what there is a one-way meterable flow control valve and they will meter flow in the direction that the fluid's going so they're the same valve but we flip the upside the the front one upside down so as the fluid's pushing up out of the pump it's going through the rear valve so we can control it when it's going through the front that one just naturally opens up so the front end has to lift the table the extended cab overs most of the body so these guys get full power on the way up we're just manipulating the rear end to match the front going up and that's on your checklist you'll get it'll say rear valve controls the rear of the camper when raising so there's no control in the front going up just the rear now opposite when it's coming down the fluids going backwards so the fluids now going through this valve so we can control the front's descent. We can't control the rear when lowering. So the front valve controls the front of the camper when lowering. Once it's dialed in, you really don't have to monkey with it very much. I uh, mean, every five or six raises, you might tweak it a little bit, but it stays pretty true. Um, having the engine idle or being plugged into 110 will give the battery more voltage. It'll spin a little faster, but really not that important or if you have solar it's getting an extra boost anyway and just like any valve turning it in clockwise will choke it off or slow it and opening it counterclockwise will speed the flow what i do when lowering it and raising i use this top of the window as a horizon against the maple trim we want it to be nice and level if it's within an inch that's fine but gets much more than that let's tweak it a little bit and dial it in that way seals won't wear and everything like that will just work better all the way around okay so to lower your camper this checklist will keep you out of trouble okay you just got to read it and follow it and that will take keep you out of anything that might go crunch in the night which i've done so we turn off our water heater water heaters off turn off the uh, water pump and furnace water pumps off furnace is off uh, check all countertops and toilet area lid. Anything above this kitchen faucet will go crunch, crunch when it comes down. Um, and if you had these doors open, there'd be nothing for this to grab on the door. So the toilet area definitely has to be put back down and nothing sitting here, obviously. Then you'd lock your refrigerator and that's a little metal tab swings off to the side, keeps the door from flying open. Then we unlock and lower cab over doors. And I'll kind of show you what I do when I do it. Once the mattress settles in, you don't have to put the extra weight on these doors. But you flip your block out of the way and the bunk latch out of the way, bring side doors down. And then I just put the weight of my shoulder and the weight of my other knee on here. It's it's best if you stay on all fours like I am. And then uh you can see there's a little air still left in the mattress then we just lower it down and we turn off the lights and then it also says make sure latches are retracted all the way and that's the bunk latches if these were sticking out like that when this center panel comes down it can grab this and scratch it so we definitely want to make sure these guys are retracted then it says raise the camper off the pins so what we're going to do here is make sure the valve's in the raise slash camp position. So it's in the raise position. We're going to push the button. It's going to come up an inch or so. When it tops out, we let go. We don't hold the button in because you'll blow the fuse on the pump. So now the pins are up and off. You just take them out. And that would say turn off lights, but since we're doing a video, we're just going to leave the lights on. So what I like to do when lowering the top, we've got everything prepped there. Put your hand on the grab handle. You have a good view of the inside. And then we're just gonna reach into the gate valve inside here, and we're just gonna roll it wide open. Then, what I like to do also, use the window, the horizontal line against the maple trim. So the top of the window frame against the maple trim is a horizon. So now we're thinking, what is the front end doing? And because we have control of the front when lowering. It's coming down here. 
obviously you'd be outside. So then when it gets down all the way, now it's down all the way, so obviously we lights would have been off. We'd put our steps inside, close the doors, lock them up, and then we'll come around a very important the travel lock that's on that checklist is the bolt that we're going to put here. Wing nut on, thumb tight, disconnect your power cord, and you're ready to go camping. Now, to raise the top, we're going to go opposite. We have to pull this travel lock off. Very important, obviously. This guy, I still like to throw in the driver's seat, so I remember it. Come around. Open your doors. Usually pull the steps out, put your steps on. Now, we're gonna put this lever to the raise slash camp position. Then we're just gonna hold the button in. Now we are monitoring what the back end's doing because we're controlling the rear when raising. So we can either speed the rear or slow the rear to match whatever the front end's doing because it's getting full flow. As you get towards the top of it, you'll be able to, on the inside of the camper, you can see the radius of the wind, the bottom half of the window. That means you're getting pretty close. When you can see the mounting screws of the top of the window frame, you're real close, and I'll just be quiet. You'll hear it go clunk, clunk, and it'll top out, and then you just let go of the button. You don't want to hold the button, or you'll blow the fuse if you hold it past when it hits the stops at the very top of the throw. So I have window radiuses now, I can see the bottom window frame, I have some mounting screws, and there it is. So now you go to all four cylinders, put the pins in. Notice I'm not going to shove these all the way in because when I lower the camper on this can get wedged. So we're just going to keep that out a little bit. Then we'll go back to the lever. And then here, we're just gonna lower it down. Here, you don't have to dump it all the way. You can just let it float down. Now it's on the pins, it's resting, so we go back to the camp position. Then we'll go push the front cab over door up. Wood block out of the way. Push the front of the door. Wood block down. Latch in the bunk latches. And you are camping, you are done. So, any questions, you can always feel free to give us a call. Um, and But let's go over the pump one more time because this is the one that everybody has questions on. Uh, part of it is almost so simple, people overthink it. So the rear valve controls the rear of the camper when raising. You cannot control the front. So. We either slow the rear down by turning this in or speed the rear by opening it. When the top's coming down, the fluid's going backwards. So we're gonna use the front valve to control the front of the camper when we're lowering it. As we now cannot control the rear when lowering, we're only controlling the front coming down. So we would either slow the descent of the front or open it and speed the descent. And that's basically it. Thank you very much, and uh, any questions, feel free to give us a call.